Hello again, everyone. Deflect here, firm but fair gaming. We are one week away from 10.1.5, and I wanted to give my first uh, augment evoker update. Uh, it's been a while since uh, this spec was announced, and I couldn't get uh, much of my details of work, and I it's been an issue. So, regardless, we're going in here to look at augment evoker and what you should expect. Is it going to replace devastation evoker? I won't know until it goes live uh, next week. And I'm going to play a lot of Augment uh, in the first week just to see how it is. But I want to get into what is going to make this buff class special. So left side, that's standard Evoker stuff. I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to focus on the right side here. And it is based around this one ability called Ebon Might. Uh, and because of this ability, uh, increase your four nearest allies primary stats by 15% of your own and cause you to deal 14% more damage for 11.1 seconds. So basically you want to extend this as much as you can and have 100% uptime if possible. So for that reason, I'm projecting the stats to be haste heavy slash, slash mastery. So you want haste to have everything come down quicker and hopefully have 100% uptime on this ebb and might. Uh, unfortunately, the rest of the Evoker gear is Crit Mastery, so Haste Mastery is going to be slightly different, I believe. But again, I won't be able to confirm how much Haste until next week. I'm assuming somewhere around 32%, uh, between 32-34, based on my few trials and calculations. Uh, but I, again, will confirm next week when it goes live. Uh, your next ability, Erupt, Eruption. Uh, cause a violent eruption beneath an enemy's feet. Increase the duration of your active Ebon Might by one second. So you want to basically just cast the eruption as much as you can. You want to be spamming this thing. Uh, getting on, I just reduce the cooldown to Quell because if you're a buff class, you might as well have a short interrupt as well. Eruption deals 30% more damage per enemy struck, up to 150%. Great one to have, seeing as you're going to be casting this a ton. <coughs> your Living Flame has a 20% chance, and Azura is 15 to make your next eruption cost no essence. Stacks two times. Definitely, definitely going to be great because you'll be spamming eruption again. <laughs> so it all comes into playing around Ebb and Might and spamming eruption. Uh, essence burst stacks two times. I did that as well. I don't know if this is going to be like... I'm not sure if this is going to double stack or not. So, you know, it might be... You know, you could have some essence burst stacked with uh, some eruptions. I don't know yet. Um, if it doesn't, and if this, uh, automatically stacks two times and this doesn't stack, this could be a useless talent. You'll have to pick something else. So again, no better when it goes live as I don't have all my stuff on this one. Uh, the other one is upheaval. This is your other, uh, castable cooldown. It also increases the duration of your ebb and might by two seconds. Got a nine yard radius at, you know, three level three, basically it just expands a radius and I'll show you that. Uh, in the gameplay. Your Breath of Eons replaces Deep Breath. Uh, and it applies Temporal root, temporal Wounds. Accumulating 21% of the damage dealt by your allies. Affected by Ebon Might. Uh, then critically strike for that amount as Arcane Damage. Applies Ebon Might for 5 seconds. So. This one is going to be great. You can extend your Ebon Might by 5 seconds. Or it applies it for 5 seconds. For enemy struck. So if they don't have it done... And you missed it with the, uh, um, you missed it earlier, or you want to use this, and you have enough cooldown, you don't need to use this while you have that might active. Well, uh, time will tell on this one for sure. It also is great because it removes root effects, so if you uh, are movement impaired, you can actually use this. Uh, eruption costs one, or essence costs reduced by one. Definitely great to have. Uh, when allies deal damage, damage with temporal wounds, they gain a shield for 100%. Not a huge one. I'm not sure if this is going to be worth it, to be honest. I just took it for now because, um, you know, temporal wounds is okay. But you only get it 1 .8, every 1.8 minutes. So, I don't know about this yet. Uh, still going to wait and see. Uh, while flying, you know, during Breath of Eon, 50% of the damage you would take is instead dealt over 10 seconds. I literally took this to get here. <laughs> that is all. Um, so I wanted this to evoke a paradox for you and a friendly healer, allowing them to cast the move and increase the range of most spells by 100% for 11 seconds. 
affects the nearest healer within 60 yards. That's the only reason I took this. Otherwise, I wouldn't take it. It's just a healer buff so they can cast on the move um, and just have more range. So uh, because of this healing heavy season, uh, buffing the healer is never a bad thing. Draconic Atonement, you get 4% max health with Black Atonement. Bronze Atonement, you get 10% movement speed. That's it. Uh, Blistering Scales, another great one to have. This one you'll probably just throw on the tank. Uh, protects an ally with 15 Exploding Dragon Scales, increasing their armor by 30% of your own. And then when they explode, they do damage. Uh, this, one, uh, this one is good to take because upheaval can't be interrupted, which is fantastic. So you'll be able to cheese a bunch of things, I think, with this. Uh, well, Castrian Blistering Scales, a shield absorbs to 200,000 for 33 seconds based on the missing health, which is very good. That's a 200,000 um, damage shield every 27 seconds. Great, great ability to have. Uh, your empowering spells read max levels increased by one, and they reach maximum power 20% faster. You're going to want that because, again, you're casting Eruption like crazy. Uh, Obsidian Scales act activates the Black Atonement. Um, max health by um, and amplifies its increased max health by 16% for 13 seconds. So very good one to have as well. Increase essence to six, pretty basic there. Essence burst is 20% chance not to be consumed, pretty decent. Essence burst reduce the cast time of eruption by 40%, very good. Uh, pre science. Uh, grant an ally the gift of foresight, increasing their critical strike chance by 3% and occasionally copying their damage and healing spells for 15% power for 20 seconds. So you can have 100% uptime on this. Uh, it lasts for 20 seconds. The cooldown is 11. You could have 100% uptime, 3% crit to somebody. So amazing. Uh, it has a 35 percent chance to grant you essence burst. So you kind of want to be casting this to get the essence burst um, chance. And then allows the ally a chance for their spells and abilities to echo their damage for healing, dealing 15% of the amount. So, should be all right. Uh, eruption reduces the remaining cooldown of upheaval by one second. Cool, it's great. Yeah, one second really doesn't do much on upheaval. Uh, you want it, you're basically casting this. It's kind of a duel. You get reduced upheaval, but you also get, you know, the increase on Ebb and Might. So, it's kind of a duel thing. I took time skip. Uh, and the reason I took this was the flat 10% uh, cooldown on your spells. So this actually is 30 seconds, and I got it down to 27 with the uh, the interwoven threads. Fire Breath grants Infernal Blessing for 8.8 seconds to you and your allies. Affected by Evan Mike, giving their damage attacks and spells a high chance to deal an additional uh, 10k damage. We'll call it 10k. We'll round up. <laughs> and Consuming Essence Burst grants 5% intellect. Four, six point six seconds stacks twice. That's what I've taken so far, and I've been messing around with. It seems to do decently. Uh, there are some other abilities, but again, I don't know if this is going to stack and just different things until it goes live next week. So this is basic, and I will update as is. But to show you what the gameplay uh, you'll be going for will be, it's pretty easy. You want Evan Might up a whole bunch of time, so it'll be Evan Might. And then you'll go into an upheaval because casting eruptions will also uh, do stuff. Actually, you might want to cast eruption just so your essence is on cooldown. But Ebon Might, we'll go with eruption first, then do an upheaval. And I just did a one stack into a fire breath max and then back to an eruption. And you can see in the top corner, mine's going up. Six seconds left. And now that I have this, I'm going to cast a breath that will bring it back to 10 seconds. Back to an eruption. And then Azura Strike to fill. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. I had 100% uptime because I can cast Ebon Might again. But it did cost me the Breath of Eons. Without Breath of Eons, I wouldn't have had 100% uptime. So just so you're aware, um, without that, yeah, I would have only had 89% like uptime. And that was based on my haste level of 25. So I think you'll want to base it so you can have 100% without breath. And breath will just be a bonus you can apply if you use it at the end of it like a pack or something. That is the basic gameplay. Uh, it's going to be buffing. You'll want to put the blistering scales on the tank, which looks like this. Pretty cool effect, actually. Um, and then you'll want to cast. Evan Might's going to be your first attack ability. So Evan Might, Eruption, 
upheaval to get them both on cooldown, fire breath, and then just as you cap out on uh, essence, you'll be back to eruptions. Uh, I will update, as always, once this goes live, then I'll have my details. I can show you the damage you're going to do and the buff you're going to do. If you have any questions, as always, leave a comment below. Like, share, subscribe. Deflect, firm but fair gaming. We'll see you in the next video.